Prior to the negotiations, I mean, the country was in turmoil. The Nationalist Party had succeeded in fragmenting our country, dividing our people, and oppression was at its sharpest end. South Africa was a mess, but at the same time, the people who wanted liberation and freedom, they were marching to their destiny. A free, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic South Africa is a great challenge to all of us and requires discipline, dedication, sacrifice on our part. After the 94 elections, we had to build the final constitution. It was the Constitutional Assembly that conducted it. That Constitutional Assembly will be made by the elected parliament, both houses sitting together representatives of the people. One of the most challenging processes was who's going to write the final constitution. The ANC was adamant that an elected body shall do that for a simple reason, because the moment you had an election, they would have the majority. Because there were no winners in the conflict of South Africa, you still have to use the route of reaching decisions through consensus. The first big thing the constitution had to do was to dismantle and destroy the systems of apartheid, of racial supremacy, create a democracy that would be open, and introduce majority rule, which meant self-determination. It was bringing together two enemies. But precisely because the two enemies had never spoken, the closeness of the negotiations actually started saying to the negotiators, we are just South Africans. We all need to survive. The ANC was not, you know, coerced into negotiations. Uh, it used it as a terrain of struggle to achieve this democratic moment that we have today. The interim constitution gave us two years within which we had to agree. Otherwise, there was a possibility that we would then have to dissolve. It was important for us to sustain uh, an atmosphere which convinced white South Africans who, who were in power at the time that uh, we were committed to the negotiations and that uh, we would negotiate in good faith. We are such a diverse society with different histories, passions get very high in this country. We've had so much conflict in the past and what holds us together is that we are all citizens of this one country uh, and our rights are defined in the Constitution. All right, I know what you're waiting for. You want the 411 on the Constitution. Tell us what it is and what it means to a person on the street. The Constitution is a supreme law that um, governs the actions of the legislature and the executive at all times. The Constitution also really enshrines the values and principles that as a nation we would be aspiring to in the Bill of Rights and in the preamble to the Constitution. Essentially the task that we had was to ensure that we have a Constitution drafted by more than 40 million people. I'm Cyril Ramaphosa, the chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly. I'm Rolf Meyer, the leader of the National Party delegation in the negotiations. Our constitution needs to protect the rights. I'm going to receive a petition from the people, the workers, who have marched against the Constitutional Assembly. Big business was entitled to an extent to be protected. At the same time, Kosati was adamant that the lockout would not be included in the Constitution. We are about to reach the final stages of completing the Constitution. We had resolved most of the problems in the Bill of Rights, but that those that remained were the most important and most difficult to solve. 
to receive education in the language and in accordance with the religious, and that's also a problem to you. Piet Maré for a long time warned me that education is going to be the most difficult issue to, to get agreement on. The National Party was particularly obstinate and I would say irrational when it came to the education clause. What are we going to do, Pete? I don't know. I believe we, we must admit more or less deadlocked. We had to address the issues and stop uh, beating without the bush. And how do you go to the eighth and deadlock on a simple issue like this? They were simply at a loss, completely paralyzed. Uh, with this particular issue. Constitutional negotiators have achieved major breakthroughs in their through-the-night talks to reach agreement on a final draft constitution. All parties will be entitled to make and propose amendments to the constitution and all those amendments will then be considered in a committee stage. I feel that is Finally, on the 8th of May, the constitution with the amendments will be put to the Constitutional Assembly, and hopefully at that stage we will have a two-thirds majority to endorse our two years' work. Then the other amendments which flesh out our view of what the Constitution should be like, they're not frivolous and they're not, but they together with the core ones would say, if we could get everything, that's what it would look like. The right to life, sexual orientation clause, you're going to do the preamble, I'm going to have a look at socio-economic rights and, of course, the, uh, the issue of horizontal and vertical, vertical application of the Bill of Rights. Yeah. The big and major one for us is, of course, the property clause, that it must be there to provide access to land, rather than protection to private property. 24th of April, 1996. Political parties have been given until this afternoon to make their belated submissions to amend the Constitution. The Management Committee of the Constitutional Assembly will sit today to look into suggestions. Ramaphosa says he doesn't expect proposed amendments to the draft Constitution to delay the adoption of the Constitution by May the 8th. Constitutional Assembly subcommittees are to continue negotiations today on the nearly 300 proposed amendments to the draft Constitution. Several deal with substantive changes to the sections dealing with education, language, property rights and the rights of striking workers. On both sides one has reservations that are going to be very, very difficult to overcome. Almost impossible. People began to talk of deadlocks. You were reaching almost a critical stage. The pressure from Cusato on this process. I don't think this is an issue which we can accept at this stage. The strike action tomorrow is unlawful and unprocedural. How does this item come here? Mr. On whether the strike by Kosati tomorrow is procedural or not procedural. Kosati was protesting to stop the inclusion of a clause in the constitution that would allow employers to lock out striking workers. I don't think we are going to adopt a constitution if both of us still hold on to our position. Did they have the national party to the street? I don't know the what you're talking about. No, no, but the no, point no, no, is this. No. Why must the ANC like abuse? Why must no, they no, uh, take no, their no, money no, out of the country? No, no, Mr. Let me, I, let I me, uh, Patricia, 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 let me help you. At one stage, Sir and myself, we were saying to each other, now we have problems. We are faced with a situation where the National Party wants us to constitutionally entrench single medium, clearly African school. And we think that to actually do that would be a return to Fervudian apartheid. Some of the newspapers, like Rapport, for instance, clearly almost put a gun against the National Party's head. If you give in on education, that's the end of it. The point had been reached that if need be, we would hold a referendum. The onus really was on the National Party because it had become very clear to them that we cannot move beyond this and still carry their constituency along. I went to my leader, Mr. Lecap, and I said to him, we are deadlocked on this thing. I don't see any way out. It's either we go for a referendum or we, uh, or we settle for something unsatisfactory. The ANC wanted to avoid having a referendum because it would show that they had failed. The opposition wanted to avoid having a referendum because they would have ended up with a worse constitution. I can promise you we are about to finalize this agreement. We didn't really know what the National Party was going to do. Are you confident that a referendum has been averted? We will be able to tell when the Constitutional Committee receives the report. The whole drama will unfold there. And this is the call to make the final approval or not.
Hello. Yeah. Okay. I am informed, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a settlement. I believe that we have struck a balance. We are glad of the further improvements. The right to be taught in mother tongue instruction. We will have to report back to them that I therefore reserve my position. We do believe that it was in the interest of our country that we find some solution to this problem. Well, that, Mr. Chairperson, is the happy conclusion of possibly one of the most emotive causes in the world. Exercising an awesome responsibility, it is my duty as chairperson to urge all of us in this assembly, even those who might have some reservations, to vote today for a democratic and free South Africa. It's not the document of some or other political party. It's really a consensus document. It belongs to the South African nation. We never reached consensus on lockout. But on the other two, property and education, I'm happy to say that I think so. we've reached satisfactory compromises. Let us all give our country its true birth certificate. The people of our country expect no less of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The Constitution, important as it is, it's a piece of paper. But it must be a piece of paper that lays the basis for real and genuine democratic transformation. A basis for us as a country to really attend to all the problems that had necessitated the struggles that we've waged over the centuries. Nose two, abstentions ten. The question has therefore been agreed to. We could really say now we have one common law that unites us. As one, you, the representatives of the overwhelming majority of South Africans, have given voice to the yearnings of millions. I am requested to close the proceedings at 12 o'clock. The period when we made the Constitution still seems very close. I remember the emotions. It was such a huge achievement at the time, and now it's become the normal part of the very makeup of, of what South Africa is. Men of character took upon responsibility to put aside their selfish interest for the sake of the nation. And that was the best way to move forward because the negotiations culminated into a constitution that saved many lives. From such a racially divided society, to equate that and build a nation for all was a profound challenge in being able to articulate now a constitution that is for all, where the rule of law was more important than the rule of men. We may not have agreed with the outcome or the point of departure even, but obviously you had to talk. In the end, you had to talk. We've given South Africa a new identity. Critically so, black and white South Africans feel that they belong together. Essentially, our constitution is a transformational document. And in some cases, it can be even seen, be seen as a revolutionary document. It formed a break with a terrible past. And the two are like night and day. We need to commemorate because 20 years is quite a long time to forget good things, to forget why we struggled so hard to get the constitution we have. I think it is also just long enough for us to appreciate its weaknesses and to look at how it has impacted not only on parliament but onto the men and the women in the street. Today, we've got so many South Africans who are homeless, who are living in poverty, who are still using sanitation that is deplorable. 
So we can't just live with a document, we've also got to give effect to the document. How do we start to waive the constitution when we engage with the people and say, okay, you're complaining about water, but look here, on this page in the Bill of Rights, these are the rights that you have, and no one can do anything outside this book so that they have faith in the constitution as the shield that should and can protect them. The last 20 years have been unbelievably dramatic years in the history of our country. We have really done a great deal to change the social contours of this country and the quality of lives of many South Africans has been improved. We may not have done enough on the economic side, I would like to see a situation in five years' time where nobody says, I, you know, hogged the wealth of this country. I want to see everyone say, I supported inclusive growth because that is what we need in our country. Our constitution uh, has allowed us to have your National Council of Provinces. And what is good about this kind of an approach is that uh, the National Council of Provinces will always engage people, taking parliament to the people. After 20 years, we are looking at ourselves and saying, as the NCOP, are we doing what the people who established the NCOP were hoping? Our long talks and, and discussions was worthwhile because of the way in which I think even other countries in the world respect South Africa because of this kind of constitution. I strongly believe South Africa is going to be one of the greatest nations, not only on the African continent, but in the world. It's time to build on what is good, put aside what is bad, and ensure that we entrench our democracy. Now we have our constitution, it should not only be a paper. In your hands, you've got a constitution that enables you to pass legislation, to deal with the past, to deal with what is preventing our people from getting a better life. But democracy has also allowed us the right to cycle leaders. And if a leader does not uphold constitutionalism, we as the people can remove that leader. And I think that is us giving effect in many ways to constitutionalism. Our constitution enables our people to check and balance us. And pleasant as it is, it is beautiful. It's not the constitution that we will expect. The entire system, the way I see it from the PAC perspective, is that it's more favorable to, to, to the haves. Instead of celebration, I think they're supposed to be a far much deeper reflection on the Constitution, identify its weaknesses, strengthen it, and then set a new path for the next 20 years. We had a great opportunity to change the political contours of this country, to introduce democracy. Great opportunity that freed everyone, because even the oppressor was freed. And this time round, we have another great opportunity that is also going to free those who have wealth when we transform the economy of our country and make the economy more inclusive so that we can have shared prosperity. This 20 years has been very important in giving us lessons where to improve, where to strengthen. It was always meant to arm us with ways to handle matters and institutions and places and, and procedures of how best to continuously handle one another. There are certain areas where we need to say, yes, this clause was relevant then, but there have been some challenges here and there. How do we make sure that we close the gap and remain a strong country in the world? It is our biggest shield. It is what we all agreed on. It may not be as perfect as some people want, but it carries the most important rights that we fought for. Parliament's celebration of the 20th years of the Constitution is a significant milestone in Africa. It's a significant milestone for us as South Africans because it celebrates the fact that we have this profound Constitution that enshrines all of our rights as citizens. In the end, the credit must be given to the people of our country.
who were hungry for freedom.